When Sir Winston Churchill said, I cannot forecast to you the action of Russia. It is a riddle wrapped in a mystery, inside an enigma. He may as well have been speaking of the Alaska Yukon Moose. During the mayhem of rut, the Alaska Yukon Moose is a blazing-eyed, belligerently swaggering beast, a massive monster known to attack locomotives. Mostly, though, he is a gentle giant with the disposition of a shy child who may react to a careless hunter by quailing in thick cover or quickly ghosting away or galloping over the far horizon like a suddenly timid warhorse. The great Alaska Yukon Bull is indeed one of Earth's most mystifying and revered giants. When Europeans first came to the New World, moose lived in plenty as far south as Pennsylvania and Virginia. Subsequently, they were hunted to extinction in their southern range and to near extinction in their northern locales. As the human population moved westward across the continent, a similar story unfolded until sportsmen, led by a conservation movement sparked by the Boone and Crockett Club, imposed strict hunting seasons and bag limits to stabilize populations. All moose of North America and Europe belong to the scientific order Artiodactyla, which designates even-toed mammals, and the family Cervidae, which includes all deer. Seven subspecies of moose inhabit the forested northern latitudes around the world, and three of them are found in North America. The grandest in size, the largest member of the deer family, and the largest of all of the subspecies of moose, is the gigantic Alaska Yukon moose of Alaska, the Yukon Territory, and the Northwest Territories of Canada. An Alaska Yukon bull has elongated legs, high humped shoulders, a stubby tail, and a large swinging dewlap. His muzzle is laughably proportioned, and he has preponderant ears, all of which augment acute senses of smell and hearing. He can see as well or better as any prey species. And despite his clumsy appearance, moose are quick as cats with speeds to about 25 miles per hour. He's an excellent swimmer and is quite at home in the water. Overall, bulls are much larger than cows. A prime Alaska Yukon bull can weigh up to 1,600 pounds and stand over seven feet tall at the shoulder. Adult moose are browsing herbivores, preferring dwarf willow, balsam fir, white birch, and aspen. In summer, moose often spend a lot of time in lakes and ponds where they can escape hordes of biting insects. Here they feed heavily upon water lily, pondweed, sedge, and eelgrass. During fall and winter, moose consume large quantities of willow, birch, and aspen twigs. Annually, one mature moose will process nearly 11 tons of browse. Once they locate plentiful food, they exhaust it, maybe only covering an area the size of a basketball court during one feeding period. Between gluttonous meals, the moose will usually be bedded in deep shade in summer and oftentimes exposed to the feeble sun, but shielded from the biting wind in winter. Alaska Yukon moose may prefer summer beds in the high country, well away from water, with steady breezes pouring over them to cool themselves and to thwart biting flies. As you would expect, the moose leaves huge tracts, six inches long and five inches wide, as well as large olive-colored droppings. Both are very much like the spore made by a 1,600-pound white-tailed deer, if such an animal existed. Whether the bull is almost one year old or beginning his 15th year, antler growth begins in April, about the time of the moose calving season. Moose antlers are incredible feats of nature. They are grown from start to finish in just four months, shed and then regenerated each year of the bull's life. Antlers from a prime Alaska Yukon bull resemble barn doors, weighing up to 90 pounds and exceeding six feet wide. The greatest antler spread recorded by the Boone and Crockett Club is from the rack of an Alaskan Yukon moose, a stupefying 81 and 4 eighth inches, nearly seven feet across. When antler development is complete around late August or early September, ossification or hardening 
begins at the antler bases and progresses upward until the entire antler set becomes rigid and hard. The white bone of antlers is then sap-stained by trees and brush raked by bulls. Moose antlers have two basic parts, the palms, which are the largest part of the antler, and the fronts, or brows. Both have a number of points jutting from them. A bull's rack continues to grow larger with age until he reaches his prime at about seven years. Near the end of life, the antlers tend to have few points and less palmation. Lesser bulls yield to the sight of larger antlers, but when two bulls of similar size get together, they often use their antlers to fight, the sounds of which can reverberate for miles over mountains and tundra. Females, too, are vocal during the rut, and it is the haunting music of a cow moose besieged by an immature bull that the mature Alaskan Yukon bull finds most arousing. During the moose rut, shattered trees and smashed brush clearly mark a bull's territory. Running bulls also excavate shallow, body-sized forms in the ground in which they urinate and imprint for other moose to identify, pits similar in function to that of the scrape of the whitetail buck. Breeding season for the Alaska Yukon moose is autumn, that glorious fraction of time from the sweet warmth of mid-September through the often snowy cold of October. During a bull's constant search for receptive cows, he exchanges his want of rest and food for nearly continuous travel across untold miles, vocalizing his primal urges, posturing, fighting magnificent battles with other formidable giants of his kind, and guarding and servicing the mainly solitary cows that often call forlornly to him across the great brooding peat bogs and otherwise noiseless forests of the far north. His calves may be born from mid-May to early June, after a gestation period of about 230 days. Depending on range conditions, cows often birth twins, and triplets may occur approximately once in every 1,000 births. Calves will weigh about 25 to 35 pounds, and are able to utter soft bleats and run quite rapidly after just a few days. Within five months, calves will have grown to over 300 pounds, and they will stay with their mother until they are chased away to fend for themselves as yearlings. One of the most aggressive animals on earth is the cow moose with her calf. She has her reasons. Grizzly and brown bears, black bears and wolves are incredibly efficient moose calf killers. In some areas of western Alaska, bears and wolves annually kill up to 80% of all moose calves. The future of Alaska Yukon moose is reasonably bright because man is learning how to manipulate habitat with wildfire while becoming more skilled at managing factors that limit moose populations, such as predation and over-harvesting. New knowledge has also helped fuel the recovery and stabilization of moose populations. Scientific studies like the Boone and Crockett Club initiative examining the relationship between wolves and moose, which began on Michigan's Isle Royale National Park in 1959, is just one example of today's pioneering research. Reasonably, there is also now a group dedicated to these great creatures, the North American Moose Foundation. Like all wildlife in a world with increasing human population, maintaining healthy moose stocks will remain a challenge for wildlife managers, present and future. Competing human interests will vie for available habitat and the venison provided by moose. Today, in Alaska alone, hunters annually harvest approximately 6,000 to 8,000 moose, some 3.5 million pounds of protein that feeds countless families. Studies in Alaska have shown that without a practical predator control program, moose populations can cease to exist. Likewise, moose have a high reproductive potential and can quickly fill a range to capacity if not limited by predation, controlled hunting, or severe weather. To many fair chase hunters, the Alaska Yukon bull 
also symbolizes the greatest and most demanding hunting country on Earth. This includes incredibly large wildernesses where virgin forests rise below sentinel peaks of jagged rock, where pure water forms powerful untamed rivers, places where the Earth's weather is born and the air is clean. To hunt him, you must rediscover yourself because he can effortlessly course hellishly difficult terrain. He's usually well beyond the last of the dim trails and thick stuff that could hide 100 moose, watching as keenly as any white-tailed buck. His country is big enough to make even monsters seem very small. And where moose are plentiful, there are perhaps only three or four of them to every square mile. Five days of hard hunting is usually a good start, and by the seventh day, you are worn out by the demands. If you are lucky and have dutifully said your prayers and finished the chase at his side in the thick bush or stop him up on a steep mountain above some lost lake, the shock and awe of successful moose hunting is only intensified during the enormous disassembly and recovery efforts for each mouth-watering pound of his precious venison, his massive rack, and his musky head skin. In yesteryear, the bull moose played many roles. Savior is perhaps his most important contribution to humankind. He fed and clothed the earliest Americans, eventually allowing the fortune hunters and the empire builders to move through the expansive west with little more than salt and fire. He was both political icon and cartoon character, filling the hearts of millions of children with laughter. Increasingly, he's seen in newscasts struggling in the backyard swimming pools of slack-jawed homeowners or ambling lost through the streets of ever-growing frontier towns. And he is certainly all of that, but much, much more. He is an ancient. He is unsolved and almost unimaginable. Through the increasingly wise and managed care of our natural resources, with unified sportsmen leading the way, hunting the great Alaskan bull moose will remain one of the most indelible adventures a hunter can know.